Hey everyone, Ryan from E-Bike Escape. And JT from E-Bike Escape. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the all new electric XP trike. Before we get started with the review, if you are looking to purchase any model offered by electric, we would really appreciate it if you use the link in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. We'll also throw our other resources down in the description as well. Our popular electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and of course, our electric bike discounts code page, where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. If you aren't familiar with our reviews, we'll start off with a walk around, then we'll get into some first person riding footage, and then we'll get into some third person riding footage, where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the electric XP trike, this is actually a very exciting launch for electric because this is the most affordable electric trike on the market. It's priced at $14.99, which is honestly a little bit hard to believe when you look at prices of other electric trikes. Now, as we record this, you can see we're at electric headquarters. They actually flew us out to take a look at the first electric XP trike that is available for testing. So we're really excited to be one of the first reviewers to give you a preview. Levi first hinted at this on the Facebook groups and then the bike will launch for pre-orders in February and eventually ship out to customers in April. Perfect timing for spring to get out and ride. Now the electric XP trike is going to be offered in this one colorway in graphite. And one thing we did want to note before we get into all the close-up details of this, this is a pre-production model. So there are still some things that when they got this model in that they decided didn't meet electric standards. So they are going to be working on them and kind of polishing them up. We're going to call those out as we get across to them. But just know that this is the almost final form of what you're gonna get, and it is an amazingly spec bike for the price. So starting up here at the front, we have hydraulic disc brakes, which is a feature that we are super excited to see, paired to a 180 millimeter front rotor. And then if you come up, we have a metal front fender, and then also just above the fender, we have the Elite headlight. This is probably one of the brighter headlights that we've seen offered standard from an e-bike company where it is available for purchase separately for the XP 3.0 and the other bikes electric offers. While we're also up here, you may notice that this does have a bolt-on front axle. The trike does come, like all electric bikes, fully assembled. So this is not something where we think you really need a quick release because you're really not going to be taking off the front wheel. Moving up from the bolts on front axle, you notice we have a solid front fork. This bike is not meant to be an off-road capable bike. It's meant to just be an accessibility tool to get people around. Moving on to the tires, Electric went with the same size tires that are found on the Electric XP Lite, their most affordable model. These are 20 by 2.6 inch wide tires, give you a little bit more confidence given they're a little bit wider than some of the narrower tires and they do have some tread on them, which gives you a little bit more grip. They also have these really nice reflective sidewalls, which give you more visibility on the road. And those are the same tires that are back here in the rear to notice they are all three of the same tires and they didn't go with their bubble size tires for clearance reasons. And by the way, if you're curious about other bikes in the lineup, we've done reviews on all of the electric e-bikes at this point, so be sure to check out our other reviews. Let's move up in here to the front. We have the same four bolt pattern on all of the electric bikes, so it is compatible with their accessories. And for launch, they're actually including the front rack and basket as well as this rear basket. So that's something that's really nice because you're likely going to want to add some storage space. So really cool that electric added it at least for the pre-orders. Moving on to the cable wrap, Electric did a really nice job with this cable wrap, keeping the cables nice and organized most of the way down to the frame. You can see that the cables do run into what I'll call the down tube here, and also some cables run externally down the frame. Speaking of the frame, let's talk about the really nice step-through frame, 13.8 inch standover height. This is going to be more accessible than say the Electric XP 3.0. And Electric really thought carefully about making this the most accessible e-bike in the lineup. On that same note of accessibility, you'll notice here that the handlebars are not these typical straight handlebars that we see on the other electric models. These are actually more of a hybrid BMX style. And what this allows you to do is right here, you can loosen these bolts and you can actually turn these handlebars back to you to make your reach much less than you would have on a standard bike. And speaking of customization, they also have the adjustable height of the handlebars. 
be aware of the minimum insertion point that's going to be listed on the handlebars. And then while we're up here talking about the stem, this is a little bit shorter, but is a same folding stem like we see on some of the other electric bikes. It gets them up out of the way. Now, given this is one of the first XP trikes in existence, they have some adjusting to do to the foldability of this bike. So we won't be able to fold it, but we will do a follow-up video on this bike when it is launched. But what will happen is there is a latch here, and if you undo this latch, this front wheel is going to tuck nicely into here. Into this area right here. So to help you though, as far as sizing, we'll put on the screen the dimensions of the bike unfolded. And then of course, we'll test putting this bike into the back of a vehicle. For grips, we have the same grips that come on the Electric XP 3.0. They recently refreshed that. They made them a little bit softer and they do have a palm rest, which is more comfortable for most people. Jumping into the brakes, we have these five-star, again, hydraulic disc brakes. Really happy to see that, especially at this price point. They have motor cutoffs, so as soon as you hit the brakes, it's going to cut power to the motor. And given this is an electric trike, we do have a parking brake here on both sides of the bike. To engage that parking brake, as you can see over here, you simply just depress the lever and push down the stop and let go, and that is going to lock the brake. Jumping into the electronics, if you're familiar with other electric models, we still have the right-hand twist grip throttle. This is actually what I personally prefer. It just seems a little bit easier if you are using the throttle quite a bit. And we do have the same LCD screen. Now, while it is monochrome, it is very easy to see even in bright sunlight. We have energy bar or battery capacity in the top, speed front and center, nice and large. Of course, pedal assist, zero all the way up to five. Of course, you can turn on and off the light by holding the pedal assist up button. Jumping to the bottom, we have some other helpful information, the odometer, trip, voltage, current, and time. Now I'm not going to jump into the advanced settings, but Electric will have a guide on their website that goes through all of the advanced settings. Just to note that this bike is going to come in beginner mode, which makes it very easy to step on and just ride at a very leisurely pace, but you can go ahead and override it if you wanna ride a little bit faster. Though the speed is going to be limited to that 14 miles per hour, given this is an electric trike. Stay tuned for the first person riding footage. We'll go through a little bit of the maneuverability of this trike because I know that is one of the major concerns we've heard from potential customers. Yeah, the fear of instability is what electric is very much trying to combat. So the coming shift in beginner mode, which limits top speed much below that 14 mile an hour top speed to give you that time to kind of get your comfort level up before you unlock it and you're able to go a little bit faster. And for those advanced e-bikers out there, you might be interested to hear that Electric is moving to a current-based pedal assist as opposed to a speed-based pedal assist. So previously, if you're in pedal assist level one, for instance, you might go at five miles per hour and then you'll feel the motor cut off. So now with the current-based system, it's programmed to go with a specific current in the pedal assist level. It's just a minor change. We'll try to talk a little bit more about it when we get to the first person riding footage. With the Electric XP trike, it does resemble some of the other models that Electric offers with the down tube here kind of squared off. They have XP trike on the down tube and of course Electric on the down tube as well. One thing I wanted to show is they do have bottle cage bosses down here on the down tube. There's actually three mounting points so you can move this bottle cage either up or down. Personally, I would have it higher so you have more step through ability. And you can see we also have the optional lock that you can purchase directly from Electric. Just to note that putting an accessory here does limit the step through just a little bit, so just be mindful of that. Moving on to pedals, we have metal pedals with reflectors, very standard that we see on many electric bikes. Moving back from the lock, you'll notice a 14 amp hour rear mounted battery. This is a little bit different than the other electric models as this front down tube has a similar design, but there is no battery in here. This is actually hollow. This is the similar mounted battery as the X Premium, but it is a bigger size. So this is 14 amp hours, whereas the X Premium has a 10 amp hour battery. It is compatible with that battery, but this comes shipped with a 14 amp hour battery. To remove it is very easy. You simply turn the key and lift and the battery comes out. Now, one thing to note, if you do have the seat down low, you may have to lift that up out of your way to get the battery out. But here's a close look at the electric branded battery right there, 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. And then up here on the top, it has a button to depress to show you the current amount of battery level. 
And then on the side here, it has a charge port. This battery can be charged on or off the bike. Also on the screen right now, we're gonna put Electric's estimated maximum range for the XP trike. It is a much higher number than you would think. And that is thank you to that new programming within the controller for going from a speed base to a current base. It allows them to kind of act more like a torque sensor versus a cadence sensor so that you're not using extra amperage when you don't need it. But just to be clear, this bike is still a cadence sensor. It just kind of is a meshing between the two systems. But again, this is a cadence sensor. All right, we're gonna go ahead and throw the battery back in here. Again, you simply slide it in behind the rear seat, twist the key towards the back of the bike, and it locks in place and you slide the keys out. Let's talk about comfort. First, we're gonna show the saddle that this bike comes with. It's the same saddle that we saw in the Electric XP 3.0. The electric is going to offer a cushier seat with a backrest. We'll throw a picture on the screen of this. And one other slight change. If you look here, this is just a standard seat post right now. But again, this is a pre-production model. In the actual production model, you will have a telescoping seat post. Before we get into the magic of the differential, the drivetrain, let's show off the metal fenders. Again, paint matched, really sleek. JT is going to turn on the lights so we can see the lighting package that they included on here. Now, the lights on the left and rear tire are just going to be on when the lights are turned on, and this center light will be brake actuated, so when you hit the brakes, it does go a little bit brighter. One other really cool feature is, you can see this welded piece down at the bottom here, and that is because the trike is going to work with the electric pet carrier, yeah. and it's going to mount very nicely right there. This is an accessory that Electric recently announced, so you can check out that. We'll be sure to throw a link in the description to this pet carrier, which I think is a really cool accessory for people who have furry friends. Again, we have the rear basket. This is the large one. Again, those are interchangeable. You can put the large basket on the front. Again, it will come with the cargo package if you pre-order the bike. Before we get into how this differential drivetrain works, let's take a close look at the motor. This is a 750 watt nominal, 1092 watt peak motor. Electric says they're using a 20 amp controller in here. So very powerful. And then jumping over here to the other side of the motor, you'll see the gearing here. This is a single speed bike. It is a 16 in the rear and a 36 in the front. This is not the chain ring and guard that you will get on the final production model. This is just one when they were playing with the gearing to try and determine what was gonna be best for this. And there is a chain tensioner wheel right here to keep that chain nice and taut. Now, one of the concerns with trikes is a lot of people have this notion that they're not safe. And of course, they're not going to be safe at really high speeds, which is why this bike is limited. But another thing with trikes is a lot of times that the wheels don't move independently, which Electric has solved with this differential. We're just gonna show off how this works. I'm gonna pick up the bike here, stop the right wheel, and you're gonna notice that the left wheel spins independently to the right wheel, mm -hmm. and vice versa. If I pick up the bike and hold the left tire, the right one is going to spin independently. So that's something that Electric really thought about with this electric bike. They decided not to go with a simple front wheel hub drive, instead going with the rear for that increased torque. The rear differential from electric is a really cool feature to be seen on a rear wheel drive trike bike. Because if you imagine like a car, when you're trying to go around a turn and you have motor power being fed, that inner wheel doesn't have to travel as great of a distance as the outer wheel. So the differential helps distribute power so that the inner wheel can travel a less great distance than the outer wheel, which has to travel a larger circle. That's enough talk about differentials in the rear end of this bike though. Let's get into some first person riding footage and see what this bike can do and see how stable it is as well. Yeah. All right, first person riding footage on the electric XP trike. I'm going to keep this bike in beginner mode because I think that's where most people are going to be utilizing this bike. Of course, you can go into the settings and override it. You will still have a top speed of 14 miles per hour though. And trikes just generally feel most comfortable in my opinion around you know, eight to 10 miles per hour. Faster than that, you definitely want to be a more confident rider. I just want to reiterate that this is a mobility electric bike, meaning it's going to be best suited for people who maybe can't ride a two-wheel electric bike. 
But one of the awesome things is you can still get out there, especially at an affordable price. So first I'm going to show you throttle, go through the various pedal assist levels in beginner mode, and then we'll take some other footage just demonstrating the turning on this electric bike. And then we'll take it up our large hill. Now the pedal assist level does coincide with how much power you get from the throttle, which I think is really nice. In pedal assist zero, no access to the throttle, which again is a nice safety feature. All right, pedal assist level one, I have the speedometer app by Cool Nix. And what's really nice is it just eases you on. The motor is nice and smooth. Again, this is a bike that is designed with accessibility first. So getting up to five, six miles an hour, right around there. Let's go into pedal assist level two. And again, not pedaling at all. Pretty similar, maybe a little bit faster then at six miles an hour, the display is reading six and a half. Let's go into three. I feel the motor a little bit more there. Nine miles an hour, 10 miles an hour. Getting close to 11 miles an hour. Let's turn around. I'm going to slow down to take this turn. Something that you'll want to do if you end up buying this electric bike is take your turns very slowly. All right, pedal assist level four. Can feel the motor a little bit there, a little bit more than pedal assist level three. Getting up into 11, 12 miles per hour. And pedal assist level five. Now, just a note, the top speed in beginner mode might change slightly from the production model. Again, this is one of the first bikes that they have stateside. But this motor is certainly capable as we'll demonstrate in the hill climb test that's coming up. So about 12 miles per hour is what I'm getting, which feels like a, at a comfortable speed, especially when you're going straight. All right, let's go in the various pedal assist levels. Now, given this is a single speed, my recommendation would be for most people, just use the throttle to get started. It's a little bit easier starting from a stop. But then pedal assist level one feels like a very leisurely cadence. It's going seven miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. I don't feel a whole lot of difference between the first two pedal assist levels. And the cadence, my cadence has definitely gotten a little bit faster, but still plenty doable. And again, we're already getting to what I view as a, a cruising speed on at least an electric trike, nine miles an hour. So let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three as we round this corner. Eleven miles an hour. Pedal assist level four. So I think for me personally, probably pedal assist level two or three is kind of the sweet spot. Pedal assist level five. Now I do believe we're hitting kind of the top speed that this bike is programmed at, but I imagine if I start from a stop in pedal assist level five, I'll just get more acceleration. And it still eases you on pretty nice, but then it ramps up and we got to 12 miles per hour quite quickly. Again, not surprising given this bike peaks at over a thousand watts. So you're probably going to rely on those higher pedal assist levels just if you want to get going a little bit faster because even in pedal assist level two or three, you're still getting about 10 or 12 miles per hour. With that, let's get into some footage showing off the maneuverability of the electric XP trike. So one of the unique things about a trike is obviously that it feels a little bit different compared to a normal electric bike. So JT is just going to show off how this bike corners and turns. What I find at super slow speeds is that it can take some extremely tight turns. Yeah. And you can see with that rear dif differential, there's no problems with that rear tire. Now, of course, if you were to go at a higher speed, there is a chance that you're going to raise the tire. And of course, that's why they have the 14 mile per hour top speed on this bike. JT is going to show off just what you might not want to do. And you can see they're just taking a turn 
at higher speeds is definitely not recommended. All right, let's do a brake test. I know it's rainy, but why don't you get up to that 12 miles per hour or so, okay. and we'll see what the bike can do. And he's gonna lock up the brakes. That's fine. Those hydraulic brakes feel really good. Yeah, I think one of the coolest things that they did is put on hydraulic disc brakes instead of going with mechanical. I'm really happy to see that. So I think to sum it up, if you're riding at slower speeds, you're going to feel plenty comfortable on this electric bike if you're riding it at speeds that the bike is meant to be ridden at. All right, with that, let's get into some hill climb footage and we'll see what this trike can do up the biggest hill that we can find here next to Electric HQ. All right, here we are at the hill climb test. This is a huge hill. It's actually steeper than the hill that we test out the electric bikes that we review. So we don't know the specs, but we're gonna see how the trike does up this large hill. Let's get into it. All right, let's see what this bike can do. I'm already at an incline, so just keep that in mind. And we did go ahead and change the setting so we're getting maximum torque out of the motor. All right, full throttle. Wow, this is super steep. I know the GoPro makes it look so much smaller than it is. Also keep in mind, I am a lighter weight rider at around 145 pounds, but nonetheless, with no pedaling, it's a little loose up here and a little wet and these tires are having no problem going up this hill. Very impressive performance and it's 65 newton meters from the motor, which is higher than the XP 3.0. And we're going up at nine miles an hour. I mean, that's the, that's the speed that you really wanna be riding for maximum comfort on flat ground. Slow down a little bit here to seven miles per hour, but and just winding our way through here. So no problem at all. I wouldn't worry at all if you lived in a hilly area, especially if you didn't plan to pedal. This bike is very capable. I'm gonna keep going just for fun. We are getting close to the top, I believe. <laughs> and we'll skip some of this crushed gravel. But with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the electric XP trike. Well, it seems like 2023 might be the year of the electric trike or at least new e-trikes from more well-known brands. And in fine electric fashion, they have single-handedly set the floor of what an electric trike costs. Seriously, electric's relentless focus on keeping e-bikes affordable is really something. Whether it be a $7.99 lightweight folding e-bike, or now an electric trike that costs just $1,500. They could have easily priced this e-bike several hundred dollars higher and still taken the crown as the best value electric trike on the market today. Now, if you're new to the electric brand, it's important to realize that this isn't one of those too good to be true deals. The electric XP trike doesn't really compromise on much of anything as far as I can tell. And it's backed by the reputable name that they have built for themselves, delivering great bikes over and over throughout the last few years. And they are a brand where I consistently see people praise their customer support. Let's dig into some of the specs. A 14 amp hour battery, about average size, and certainly what you'd expect at this price point. The XP trike has probably a more powerful motor than necessary given it peaks at over a thousand watts when you consider the speeds that a trike is comfortable at. Though this does mean that it's hard to imagine a hill that this thing wouldn't be capable of, though keep in mind heavy loads will impact performance. The single speed drivetrain is simple and seemed geared appropriately. Stopping power is provided by the hydraulic disc brakes, which were a pleasant surprise. Plus parking brakes, which are a necessity given there's no kickstand. 
The XP trike takes nods from other models in the electric lineup, and while we weren't able to fold this particular bike, we managed to squeeze it in our BMW SUV unfolded with the help of the folding handlebars and putting the rear seats down. It's still heavy at 65 pounds without the battery and into the low 70s with the battery, but if you need to transport it, it can be done in an SUV and it surely helps to have an extra set of hands. Speaking of moving the bike around, we're told that the final version will easily clear exterior doors with a width of 30 and a half inches. Electric seems to have taken the more difficult route with adding the rear differential, paired with the rear motor as opposed to some electric trikes, which are front wheel drive. More testing on both is needed for me to make up my mind, but it seems like traction is better on a rear wheel drive electric trike. Rounding out this e-bike are the nice paint match fenders, great cargo accessory options even included in the pre-order, the tried and true LCD display and controls, paired with the right hand twist grip throttle, Plus the larger Elite headlight is included up front and in the rear, not one but three lights integrated for increased visibility. For added comfort, I would consider opting for at least a cushier seat if not the one from Electric with the back. Check out our electric bike accessories list for some other popular options. So who's an electric trike really for? It's best to look at this through a different lens than a typical e-bike. Buyers of two-wheeled e-bikes aren't necessarily going to be buyers of an electric trike. I view it as a new segment, for those who wouldn't otherwise be able to ride a two-wheeled bike. The low step-through opens this e-bike up even more to those with limitations, and the stable three wheels, again at slower speeds, means those unsure on two wheels will feel much more comfortable on a trike. Keep in mind there's a beginner mode for a reason, and I imagine a vast majority of owners will keep it in this mode. So if I've convinced you that the electric XP trike is for you, I'd appreciate it if you use our link in the description. It costs you nothing and truly helps us continue to review electric bikes. Let me know what other electric trikes you're considering. And on a personal note, I am super excited to see more people enjoying the magic of electric bikes. I hope this segment really takes off because it is a great accessibility tool and heck, it's relatively affordable too. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.